Hello there. Um, the purpose of today's video is to explain mainly three things. Packages, crates, and modules. These are three words that you've probably heard before, but they were never explained in any context, so let's get into it. Packages are a cargo feature that lets you build, test, and share crates. So all that we've been using so far, um, like if you did the project from Chapter 2 and you imported the RAND crate, that was a package, right? Package crate. Um, crates, they are a tree of modules. I'll be drawing a couple of these trees, going into some examples later, but it's a tree of modules. Um, and modules are something that let you organize your code. Before we get into drawing the module crate trees that I've mentioned before, um, I want to let you know that there's two types of crates. There is a library crate and there is a binary crate. The binary crates are just what we've been using so far. So we create cargo, new, my project, you're creating a binary crate, which means that it has an executable and it can be executed with cargo run. Um, if you're creating a library, in contrast to the binary, you can't cargo run it. So it's not an executable and it's something that has implementation that can be brought into a binary to be executed. And with that said, when you're creating a package, there are a couple of rules that you must follow. First one is, in a package that can be either zero or one libraries. No more than one. Well, I guess you can't have less than zero, but you get the idea. And you can have an infinite number of binaries. Uh, but you must have at least one crate. So either one library or one binary. Let's now create our first module and draw our first module uh, tree. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to create a library. To create a library, you do cargo, new, lib. I'm going to create a restaurant. Okay, now let's cd into a restaurant and let's start Visual Studio Code. Now, instead of having our main.rs, we now have our lib. .rs. Um, just consider all that you see right here. Testing is another chapter that we'll get into later. But what I want to do is I want to show you the syntax for creating a module. And that is you say mod um, and we'll create restaurant related uh, modules. So something that you have in a restaurant is a front of house. And it goes to this Okay, so with this, oops, that's wrong syntax. With modules, you don't have um, parentheses, you just have your curly brackets to start off the module. Okay, so with this, um, what's happening in terms of a module uh, tree is the following. Lib.rs established our crate root, which is conveniently called crate. Now below the crate root, we have the module we defined, which is the front of house. Below front of house, we have hosting and we have serving, both of them with their respective functions. Now after this, we'll get into a bunch of rules of what a parent can access in the child, what a child can access in the parent, and what siblings can access from one another. Um, so, see you in a bit. Okay, now let's continue on our previous example with front of house, but let's delete some of this stuff just for simplicity. And I'll create another function outside of front of house called eat at restaurant. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to access this add to wait list? There's two ways I can do that. The first one is with absolute paths, and the second one is with rel relative paths. Um, what absolute path means is that we're accessing anything directly from the crate root. 
So we'll start the create route and we'll navigate down. And we do that by saying create double colon front of house double colon hosting double colon add to waitlist. Okay, so this is an absolute path. We're starting at the create root and we're moving down. And the way that we do that, syntax wise, is with double colons. Now, in relative paths, instead, we'll start from our current scope, so our current context, which is front of house. Next, we have hosting. Next, we have at waitlist. Okay? Now, both these methods are achieving the exact same thing. And the decision of whether to use one or another really depends on your project, depends on how you want to move things around. Because, for example, if I wanted to create a module called dining and put eat a restaurant inside it, like so, now, is our absolute path okay? Is a relative path okay? And the answer to that is kind of spoiled by VS Code. The relative path isn't okay, but the absolute path is. So if you can imagine the tree, we have our crate, we have uh, front of house, we have dining, and we can still access crate, front of house, just the same. But our relative path now doesn't really work because front of house is in a different module and eat a restaurant is in a different module itself. So in this, in this case, we want to stick with absolute path. However, if, if we were to instead wrap everything in a new module, so say, I don't know, customer experience, now our absolute path isn't okay because we'll have to say create customer experience, okay? Now, let's go back to what we had initially. So let's control Z until we had this. Now the, the little squiggly lines under hosting, in this case, is telling us a lot about Rust, actually. It's it's telling us that, and, I'm, and this time I'll let VS Code spoil it, module hosting is private. So what that means is that eat at restaurant isn't actually being able to access hosting. For example, if I were to cargo check, we get the exact same thing. It doesn't compile. And to fix this, I'll introduce some new syntax, the word pub. Okay. What pub is doing is it's making module hosting private, uh, public. And now we get squiggly lines under add to waitlist and it's the exact same problem. So we have to add pub to add, add to waitlist. Now, what this is telling us is that in Rust, everything, so like functions, modules, they're all private by default. And if you want to make them public, you have to specifically say pub. This is also telling us that a parent can't access private elements of its children. So you can imagine either restaurant is a function of crate, right? So hosting is a child of front of house, so consequently it's a descendant of either restaurant it can't access its children or this and private methods. And lastly, what I'll do now doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of a restaurant, but just for demonstration purposes, um, inside of add to waitlist, let's call the eat a restaurant function. So we'll start a crate and we'll move down eat a restaurant. You note that we don't get any errors. And what this is telling us is that children can access private elements of parents, okay? So it's, it's the opposite, right? So parents can't access private elements of children because they're wrapped 
and children can access private elements of parents. Another little piece of syntax that I want to introduce is the word super. Um, sometimes we don't want to always access from the uh, from our create root and we just want to quickly refer to something in the module above. Right? And to do that, the word super exists. So suppose that in front of house, I work to create a function, I don't just do something. Okay, and, and let's just leave it blank. Now in add to wait list, um, what I've, with what I've taught you so far, you would have to do create, front of house, and then do something. But what the word super allows us to do is do this in shorthand. We, just, just, we can just say super, do something, and then we're accessing the scope right above um, our current scope. So right here, we're in the scope of hosting, which goes from here to here. By super, we're increasing our scope from here to here. Now to finish off today's video, I want to talk about making structs and enums public. And just to continue our restaurant example, I'm going to create another module called back of house. And instead of back of the house, I'm now going to create a public struct called breakfast. Now, when I'm using pub in structs, I'm not making all the variables inside struct public. In fact, if I were to do this, both of these variables would be private. So you have to uniquely specify which variables inside of a struct you want to be uh, public. So you say pub toast. Oops, once again, I keep on adding these parentheses. But you say pub toast. And let's keep seasonal fruit private. Now, let's create an implementation for breakfast uh, in which we'll say pub function summer, we'll say toast, we'll pass in a reference of a string, and we'll return a struct breakfast, and right here we'll create breakfast. We'll say the toast is whatever they're passing us, oops, string from toast and our seasonal fruit is going to be in relation to what's available in the summer, which in this case is going to be peaches. Okay. All right. Now, a couple of important things to note here is actually let's complete in our let's complete this example in our rate edit restaurant. Let's create a mutable meal and let's access back of house. Let's access our struct breakfast. It's public, so that's okay. And then we'll access our summer uh, function. We'll say they will want the toast rye. So this is creating a breakfast struct and we're passing in the toast rye. Now, this is what I was going to say previously. It's important to note that because seasonal fruit is private, we cannot utilize the breakfast struct in any other way but the implemented function that we have here. So we can't simply start a, a breakfast struct out of the blue. Okay. Um, something else that we can do is we can access dot notation to change the toast to anything else. So we can say string from, and we want to change it to, wait. And that's because toast is public. In comparison, we can't really do meal dot seasonal fruit. Okay. And now, in contrast, I can create an enum. So I'll say pub enum appetizer and now if I create a soup element inside and a salad element inside I don't have to specify that they're both public because by default they will be 
And this is a design choice because it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have private elements instead of enums. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I'll see you next time where we'll continue with chapter seven. See you then.